All right, here it is. <laughs> Going across the threshold. It's been about two weeks since we purchased this property and this one's a little bit different than our typical rental. You know, in the last video that I did with my wife, we talked a lot about why we're buying this 10 and a half acre mini farm and uh, how we're gonna turn it into sort of a business within a house that we're, we're actually living in. So this is different because we're gonna be living at this rental um, and then we'll have, you know, my wife's business here in this, uh, this pole barn where she's gonna sell antiques and then we're gonna have some tiny houses in the back uh, beyond this this barn back here. We've got some acreage back there where we're gonna have some tiny house rentals. And so I wanna talk in this video about uh, some of the decisions that we made early on when, first when we found this property and then the decisions and, and why we made some of those decisions since we started the rehab of this property over the last two weeks and then ultimately some of the things that we found and some of the surprises that we found since opening up the walls. So first I want to start on the outside of the property. This is the back of the house. We've got you know the garage over there and the pole barn here. Um, and as you can see right away, there, we've got a pretty decent size gravel driveway now. So this is one of the first things that we did over the last two weeks. I had a crew here working outside and we had, you know, a uh, bobcat and a ditch witch. And we had both those running for four days straight. And we put in a much bigger gravel driveway because we're going to need that once we turn this barn into a business. We're anticipating having, hopefully, having customers that are going to need parking. And then also, once we have rentals in the back, they're going to need parking as well. So we want to get that in right away because our focus right now when it comes to the outside is really on the essentials. You know, we're in the Midwest, we're in Northwest Indiana, and around here it gets pretty cold in the winter. So we wanted to make sure that we got all the essential items done outside that we needed to before the ground froze. So you can see, you know, the dirt's graded here. This was uh, an old um, pen area. So there was fencing here that kind of went down to the pond area and so we ripped out all that old fencing because we're going to put in new fencing eventually in the spring. Um, and then we burned off a lot of, we had a, a ton of um, trees that were dying that were kind of hazardous, uh, could have fallen on someone. So we had some of those cut down, we cut some down ourselves um, and we burned those off. And then we made a big pile in the back uh, where we, you know, we took some of the the debris back here and the intent is that we'll we'll take it over to a scrap yard here this week but uh, we just piled it up first so you can see back here this is some of the acreage this is some of the acreage that we have in the back and so this is where we're planning to clean up and we're gonna put uh, tiny homes back here and I think it'll just be a, a cool experience for families like living in Chicago an hour away. They can come out here, they can see the animals, they can shop at the antique store, they can buy some local goods and just have the, the quiet farm experience out here. And uh, so the intent is to have like three tiny homes that we'll either build on uh, a, a slab or we'll have them up on a trailer if it's part of the, the permit requirements. We're, we're still trying to figure that out, but, um, but that's the, the intent behind this property. So now let's check out the interior of the house so we can see the progress that we made over the last two weeks on the inside. All right, so real quick, walking in the back door of the house, I just wanna do a quick uh, tour of some of the changes that have occurred in the house so far, just in the past two weeks. So if you remember, this was kind of a, a small eat-in kitchen area and it had sort of lower ceilings. So you can see right now, the ceilings are pretty high and that is because there used to be an attic here and one of the big decisions that we made right up front was to eliminate the attic and we're gonna tray the ceilings. So we're gonna have much higher ceilings. It's gonna make this somewhat smaller house feel a lot bigger. This was the kitchen before and it was all enclosed. There was a wall right over here that separated the living area from the kitchen. And so we took out that wall, we opened it up to this living area and then right beyond it, we've got what used to be a wall here 
and we still have the two by fours there because they're providing some support. We're gonna beef up the uh, header there so it carries some of that load and then we're gonna take this wall out. And so this used to be sort of a small living room but it's actually gonna be a decent sized living area now. The, the two living areas are gonna be combined into one and then it'll flow into the kitchen as well. It'll be all open. We'll still have a, a nice eating area around the corner there. Um, and uh, and so it, basically we just gutted everything. We took, we opened it all up. Um, and then over here, this used to be the main living room. And now it's gonna be a, a small office nook. And then our master bedroom back here with uh, a master bath and a closet over here. So totally redesigning the layout of this house. So the big decisions on a house like this really revolve a lot of times around the layout. So initially the key is to find a property ideally with the footprint, the square footage footprint that you really want, that you're after, because that eliminates a ton of cost. So this property is about 1,850 square foot. And so what we were looking for is, is a property about this size, maybe a slightly bigger. Um, and so the decision that we had to make initially, one of the biggest decisions around layout, which kind of dictated everything else, was do we put an addition on this far wall over here? Do we blow out that wall and put an addition on? Because right now it's my wife and I and two small kids, but we want to have more kids. And so if we have four kids, this would be kind of snug, you know, for, for the four of us, for, for two adults and two kids, 1,850 square foot, I think is perfect. You know, some people probably grew up in a 1,200 square foot house and had five brothers and sisters and said it was fine. And then others, you know, live in a 5,000 square foot house and think that it's way too small. But for us, you know, we're, we're kind of more minimalist. We try to maximize as much as we can in terms of, of square footage. And so what we wanted was the ugliest house we could find that had enough square footage. And so what we ultimately decided is that 1,850 square foot met our needs really well right now and that we could always put the addition on in the future. And what that did was save us a massive amount of money because it's not just the decision of a addition or no addition and everything else is equal. You know, once we put the addition on, then things like the siding, which, you know, we've got 20 year old cedar siding on the house that's in really great shape. And so it'd be great to just keep that because it could last another 20 years if we stain it and take care of it. And if we put the addition on the side, then most likely we're gonna have to put new siding around the house because it'd be tough to, to, to match the siding. Um, and then the roof, the roof is in great shape as well. And so why destroy a roof that's in great shape and have to re-roof the entire house when we could get another 10 years out of the roof. And so, and then also tying in the electrical, the plumbing, the HVAC to an addition, it's all really in great shape here. It's been updated in the last probably 20, 30 years. And so it's not, not too bad. And so we hate to, we, we always try to use as much as we possibly can. And that's what I advise to other people too. First look at, what are all the features that I can use of this house that I can incorporate into the rehab and I, I don't have to be wasteful and you know get rid of stuff that, that actually works for me. So, so we did that and that's gonna uh, really decrease our, our overall budget. The next decision that we had to make then once we decided that we're gonna stick with this 1,850 square foot blueprint was maximizing the square footage. And so if you think about it, there's areas in houses that are just not efficient. So over the last two and a half years since we rehabbed our current property, we've realized that, that places like our bedroom, you know, it really only needs to be big enough for a bed. That's the, the only thing that we do in there is, is sleep in the bedroom. So why have all this extra space that we currently have around our bed when we could incorporate that in square footage into a living area or into the bathrooms or some area that's gonna be much more useful like the kitchen or something like that. So, so we got super efficient with the layout of the house and maximize the square footage. So I don't think we're gonna feel like this is too small once we move in because we were really efficient with, with the uh, layout. So ultimately what we're going to have in this 1,850 square foot house is a nice master suite with, you know, 
The bedroom's just enough for our king size bed. And then we've got a, a bathroom that's attached with a double vanity and then two, uh, two closets. And then we're gonna have two bedrooms upstairs with a bathroom up there. And then we'll have another bedroom in the common area down here. So we'll have the kitchen here and then like I said, the, the larger living area here. And then there's a, a partial full size, like there's a, a basement, but we can finish half of it. Half of it's newer, it was an addition at some point, and that's the part that we can finish. The old part that's older, we're gonna leave unfinished. So we'll have like a play area down there, kind of a utility family living area down there that we can use as well. So it's gonna be really, I think, a, the perfect size for our family on the inside here. One other big piece of advice that I would give when it comes to rehabbing, you know, there's the saying time is money and it's super true when it comes to rehabbing because you have your costs like the, the whatever your, your financing is during that rehab process, the utilities, the taxes, all those things that are running on a day-to-day -day basis. There's a cost every single day that that rehab is taking place, it's costing you money. And so jumping in and getting the rehab done as quickly as possible, you know, we're two weeks in and we've made some really incredible progress here we, on the outside and on the inside of the property. And this is what I like to see. And the only way this happens is if you do some things as soon as you get it under contract. So as soon as I get a property under contract, I'm in here figuring out the layout. So my wife actually was participated in this one very heavily. Normally it's me figuring it out on a rental. It's kind of autopilot. You know, you're picking the same materials. It's, it's very similar. You know, you're, you're keeping a lot of the same layouts, but in this one, obviously, since we're going to live here, my wife has the design eye and we came in together and we figured out, you know, what the layout's going to be. And then we were picking materials right from day one after getting it under contract not waiting till we purchase the property. So we had this whole 30 day period where we figured out all this stuff. We got our contractors in here, they bid out the project so that the day we closed, we had a demo crew here. They were tearing it apart, they were getting going. So that tomorrow on Monday, two weeks in, we're gonna start framing out the property. And so really getting a jump start on it, you know, a project like this could take six months for some people if you're not really well prepared. And I think it's gonna be a max of three for us just because we've got things lined up really well. Then the final point that I always like to remind people of is keeping in mind the cost to value equation. So on our previous house, it was on Lake Michigan, you know, a lakefront house, it's kind of a no brainer when it comes to this. Every dollar of materials that you put in, typically you're gonna get back uh, several times that, you know, when you sell it, uh, depending on what you buy it for, obviously. But if you get a good deal on it, you know, you're, you're always going to make more than what it costs you to put into it. But then if you go to a more remote area, a lot of times, it's the inverse. You know, your cost of materials is the same whether you're on the lake or in a remote area, but the, the values of properties aren't quite as high. So I'm always keeping in mind a running tally in the back of my head of what are the costs gonna be for the things that we want to accomplish in a property like that compared to what the value will be when we're all done so that we're never upside down. You always wanna have equity built into any project and it can be easy in a situation like this where you say, well, it's no big deal. Let's just put extra money into this, this, and this because we're living here and it's gonna be a business so it should generate money. But I think it's a sin not to have equity in your property, so always, Keep in mind what the value of the property is going to be and how much cash flow these things that you're doing are gonna generate. So obviously if you're living there, you're gonna probably go a little above and beyond what you typically would do in your investment properties that are primarily investment properties. But you know, you you need to make still make smart decisions. And so we're, you know, like I said, we're not doing the addition initially. We're we're using as much as we possibly can in the property. And at the end, this is going to be a stunning renovation. And you won't even be able to tell that we incorporated a lot of the stuff that was already existing in the property just because we're using what we can. And then when it comes to the outside, we're investing in items that are going to generate income for us in the future. And that income is going to dictate the value later on. So if we're going to sell this property and we've got 
a business in the pole barn that generates a bunch of income, that's going to up the value of the property. And then if we've got tiny houses on the back that are these beautiful little houses that are rentals in themselves, those are little businesses as well. So that ups the value of the property. And so we're, we're trying to invest every dollar into something that is smart. It's not something that you know we're just going to consume. It's something we can consume and it's also an investment at the same time. So I always recommend that cost to value ratio. So hopefully you got a lot out of this video. If you did hit the subscribe button, hit the little notification bell next to it because I release videos like this on a weekly basis and I'm gonna be providing more updates at this particular property as we make more progress here. Also, you can join a Facebook group that's an awesome group. Lots of really smart investors hang out there, so you can jump in there, ask any questions that you have. And finally, check out one of the two videos that just popped up to my right, right here, and you can continue your rental investing education. I'll see you in the next video.